This is Dan Abbott from Southern Maine Community College. I'm making this video in response to a request or a question from a student about how to link global variables to individual parts that are not necessarily in the same part file. And I don't normally cover this in this class because it's a little more advanced, but you asked me a question and I'm going to answer it. So um, one way to do that, I don't have any equations set up here at all, but I did create a text file. It looks like this. This is the caster project. You'll see in a bit what I'm going to do with this. And this should look very familiar. It should look what the, like what the equation manager looks like. And in fact, these are the global variable names and the values that could be assigned in the equation manager. I'm going to save this file. And I'm going to save it as a text file. And I'm just going to put it in where the parts are just so it's convenient. So I have a single folder for this project. And in this case, the project is the global variables across parts. Um, hang on just a minute, oh, 170, global variables across parts folder. I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to call it equations.txt. Now you can also create these by creating an equation um, table using equation manager and then export it. But what I'm going to do in, instead is take this and I'm going to import it. So right now I drew this using just regular old dimensions. If I do that, you can see the dimensions everywhere on it. There's no particular um, dimension that is based on a global variable yet. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to the equation editor and to find it. It's under tools, but if I can't remember, I type EQ. When equations come up, I say bring up the equation editor. I'm going to import that file. When I import that file, it should create, we'll find out, it should create a equation table right there. should create an equation table. And you can choose which of these you want to bring in. I'm going to import all of them. And you notice they all come in. Now it's as though I typed them in this. They're grayed out because I can only change them by changing the text file. The beauty of this is you can bring this into any file you want. So I've got the um, yeah. So I've got equations now. They're right, all right here, and I've got this part. So I can go and say, all right, what I want to do is change a couple of dimensions on here. So for instance, at 82 right now, I'm going to change that so it equals global variable width. So now it'll match that global variable for width. And then right here, 48. Do the same thing, type the equal sign, go to global variables, real axis location. I guess I'm changing it to 50. I am. Um, and then you have a number of other things as well. We could put in here, and I'm going to leave it at that for now. Uh, no, I'm not. I want to put. I want to put the depth of that in as well. So I'll go to the boss extrude for that. Right click and edit it. Instead of 38. I'm going to type the equal sign and go to recess. The such, the next, you'll see in a minute why I call that recess. So now these things are all based on global variables. And what I can do now is go to one of the other files like the top plate. And in the top plate, I'll do something similar here. I'll change this one. Read only because I am not sure why it was read only, which is why I paused this and built it again. So if I'm double clicking on that one, equals going on global variables, and the global variable I want with there is called width. So this is what is going to allow me to go through, and I can do this with all kinds of things as well. In fact, let's um, change one. I'm going to get rid of that dimension and I'm going to replace it with this dimension, which is the size of the recess that we have in there. Equals global variable recess equals. All right now, a fully defined sketch. I've got the um, thing designed with global variable. So now I've got equations driving several things in two different parts. You could obviously expand on this. If I were to then display both parts, and then open up that text file, the one that looks like this, 
if I decided I wanted to change the length overall to oh actually I don't think to change you know I can change it it didn't it's not going to change in both because they didn't use it in both but 142 for instance and I wanted the width to be 88 and I wanted let's go with the wheel axis location based on the diameter let's just say I want to make the diameter of the wheel bigger and the recess 38 yeah and let's make the recess 42. Let's make it a little bigger, 44. Once I save this, that text file now is giving in different information. So if I over, go over here to the little light and I rebuild that, you notice that now that got rebuilt. I come over here and do this, and you notice that got rebuilt. And it got rebuilt, so it's going to stay the same. So that's a sort of brief... Well, let me, do, let me show you one other thing, because the question is really, how do you connect all these parts? And there is another way to do this that's similar. Um, so let's go and look at that. That would involve putting an equation into an assembly. And one trick here that you could employ is you've got a project, and you want that project to all be linked with all the different parts being able to um, get access to the same global variable. What you would probably want to do is to open up a file, define your global variables in that editor completely, export it so you have a text file, and then save the result as a template for that project. Now start every part with that template. And there's one other thing if you're going to do this that I actually should mention. And the other thing is this. When I created my text file, go open that up again, I did it assuming that the units that would be used would, would be the same in all the files. The problem with that is that with equations, that number, depending on what you have your unit set for in the individual part file, that number could be interpreted as either inches or millimeters. Not a bad idea to put the units in to all of your equations. And it's a really good idea if you plan to use those equations across multiple parts. So we'll go to multiple parts, put in the MM, and now these others. I've got a few other things that are basically equations built on the global variables. I didn't put uh, spaces in these names. You can put spaces. I don't usually sp put spaces in names. This is sort of a programming trick when you're doing uh, creating individual user variables. And um, I just use something called camel case. Instead of spaces, I just have everything starts with a lowercase and it goes to an uppercase, lowercase. That's a little trick I learned from Paul Richardson, who's an excellent programmer, and it works really well. And also, if you're going to do it this way, you might as well make them long enough to understand what they mean. So A, B, C, and D aren't going to really do the same job for you because you have to have a record some some place of what those A, um, B, Cs, and Ds all mean. So the other way to do this is to do it this way. I'm going to start a brand new assembly file. And when I start the, and I've got all the parts made, and you can just make the parts just using any individual um, dimensions that you want. So I'll bring in my top plate as my first part in this assembly. Now in the assembly, I can also create equations. Now I've told you you can't use equations for mates, and that is true. You can't use an equation by saying I want the distance between these two surfaces to be equal to the global variable A. Um, or the angle distance. So, but on the other hand, you can use global variables inside other individual parts in an assembly. So if I import that same file into my assembly and say, yeah, bring it in, I now have the same global variables defined in this assembly. Now they're in the assembly, but as I start bringing my parts in now, insert components and bring in the cast to support, I bring that in, a little bit odd looking. Also, <laughs> the spacing on the, yeah, this, in this case, the spacing on the holes isn't going to match up because probably the dimension I put here was the distance between holes and the dimension there was a distance from the outside. That's just a question of, I don't know why I'm bothering to do this, but I do like the idea of having, yeah, that's exactly what it was, I assume. So I have two sketches, and if I look at that sketch right there, There's one thing about this, by the way. You have to really, yeah. So I've got the spaces, but the space between the holes here. Um, one thing about this, and something you need to keep in mind, 
if you do this, you have to do some very careful planning. So in this case, I didn't make these with the intent that I was going to use global variables across parts. So it didn't occur to me to do the careful planning on this. So I'm going to instead say the distance from here to here should be 12. There we go. Now when I go back, save this and go back to the, um, the assembly. Yes, yeah, an old file because I opened it. If I go back to the assembly, it's going to look like that. So now I'm just going to match these things up. I'm going to say match those two together, make them coincident. Take that cylinder and that cylinder and make them concentric. That one and that one, make them concentric. So you'd be building your assembly this way and you'd be going from, you know, further. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, well, there's a couple ways I can do it, but I can double click on this. And you notice that this is an equation already with, SolidWorks does this sometimes. I don't know what units it thinks it's displaying that in, but if I change it from millimeters to inches and then back, it normally comes out right. So I've got some equation driven dimensions here. I'm using the same text file that I use for those individual parts. I don't have to have done that, but I did. And you notice when I come in here, I should be able to come back out here and we'll make another change here. Ooh, good thing I didn't save that one. Um, length on this one uh, was 136. So we'll put it back to 136. And then the width on this, we'll put that back to what it was, which was 82. And I'll make the axis location based on the wheel diameter. I'll put the wheel diameter back to 100. Now we'll do the save. We'll come in here and I'm going to update this whole thing. When I update this whole thing, you'll notice that all the parts adjusted at the same time. You can also start with the assembly like this, as I did. And then when you bring in other parts, you can modify those by applying the equations to those other parts as well. So if I insert, well, let's just go and bring in a, uh, oh, let's bring in the axle for this. If I bring this in, I can go ahead and, and edit this and change some of the, in fact, I can edit in place, or I can just double click and do this. Say I want to, yeah, we have to save it first. I want to change that equals global variables. I have access to all the same global variables right here. So again, if you're very careful when you start by naming these in something in some fashion that makes it obvious, you can now link all of your parts together. This is an alternative to what I showed you before with top-down design, where all, all your parts were built in the assembly in the context of the assembly. This may actually be easier for you. I think that's probably why Laura asked about it. So those are tools that you can use, and it's really up to you how you want to do that. On the final project that you do, whatever it is that you're creating, as long as your product, when you're done, is a logical design, there are no interferences, you have no underdefined sketches, all the other criteria that I've been emphasizing all semester, um, then I don't care how you approach this. And if you find that those tools are going to make your life a little easier, then go ahead and use them. Top down's a little bit cumbersome to use. This might actually be easier for you, and so I'm glad she asked that question. I'm going to um, wrap this up, and I'll be answering questions in class about it, and we'll go over it there. And one other little wrinkle. Suppose you do want to build one or more parts in the context of the assembly. In other words, you want to insert a new part into an assembly by building it in the assembly. So we go to Insert Components, New Part. Put your green check right here. Now what we're going to do is look down on this, and I'm just going to put a top plate to bolt this to. And those of you that are in class recognize there's a lot of parts I didn't bring in here to shorten this video. So what I'm going to do is go to the sketch tool, and I'm going to grab the rectangle command. And first I'm going to try to place a dimension on here by typing, oh it's in inches, typing the insert, the equal sign, and then going down to well, you know, it's global variables aren't there. This is a little bit odd, and I'm not sure just why that is. But what you have to do to use global variables if the part you're making is in the assembly itself is to just put any old random dimension on what you're doing. 
and then go ahead and finish building your parts. And that would, by the way, include doing the convert entities so you can use the parts themselves to get to these entities. So um, in this case, we would do What's that. I'm going to select the holes themselves. Oops, I got that hole more than once. The holes themselves to convert to this sketch. So I'm just doing the convert entities so that the holes in the top plate of the caster are also going to be converted to the steel plate. So we do that. Excellent. Fully defined sketch. Come back over here to features. And then do your extruded boss. And whatever size you want to make it. Because don't forget, you can always type in the units as well. And sometimes that's a good idea. Then we come back out. So now, um, right now, the global variables aren't being used for this top plate. But I can double click on the top plate and then change those variables. When I double click now and type equals to, I can go and get a global variable. And so in this case, I might say, let's take the length and make this uh, steel plate, which is really just part of a phantom part anyway, just make it 20% bigger by multiplying by 1.2. And then take this other dimension. Actually, did I say length on that? That should be the width. Yeah, I made a mistake here. So, global variables width times 1.2. Click OK. And then come back up here and do the same thing on this one. The equal sign, global variables, length times 1.2. I really don't know why I couldn't do that in the sketch. It seems to me I should be able to. And now when you go over here, it rebuilds and so now no matter what happens to the top plate it's going to make this plate bigger so yet another way to link parts together so you can see we've got a, an assembly here where there are many things that are connected and if I was very diligent about it I could just go in open my text file make a bunch of changes and have them all build without having the part blow up if that's physically possible sometimes that isn't if you have an extreme change it can affect something else that you're not anticipating but um, that is, however, a very useful way to connect these various parts.